What up guys, it's your boy Kevin E the Farm D, aka Kevin the Refugee. And today I'll be talking about will a pharmacy residency protect me against automation? In this video, I'll also tell you the residencies that I think will be protected against automation. And if you're like me and haven't done a residency, I talk about different strategies to perfect protect yourself against automation. <laughs> Before I go into this video, make sure to hit subscribe. It really helps my channel a lot and helps with the growth of this channel. No lie, the other day I was actually thinking in my car. I was listening to the news and I heard about like Uber self-driving cars and this whole battle between companies, between Lyft, Google, and Uber. Uber is locked in a legal battle with Google over stolen trade secrets and the cutthroat race for the self-driving car that both companies have set their sights on. Honestly, it just made me think like, for the longest time, I've heard a lot of people talk about automation, is pharmacy is pharmacy in jeopardy and stuff. First of all, let me start off with this. So what industries get automated? The perfect ideal candidates are ones that need high accuracy, they're boring as fuck or mundane, when you want to increase productivity, and if there's repetitive work. In my mind, after working in the pharmacy for 10 years, um, Pharmacy is the first thing that popped in my head, at least retail pharmacy. I think this is the reason why so many organizations keep on promoting pharmacy, saying that it's more than just counting pills, because it really is. And if we are going to protect ourselves against automation, we have to change the way we look at our profession. You know, the general public, how they look at us is that all we do is pour, count, lick, and stick. The pharmacist devotes his time exclusively to filling prescriptions. And we can't do that anymore. I read a quote from one of the schools, and it was saying, if all you want to do is dispense, you'll be out of a job, which is so true. So that's why there's so many initiatives focusing on clinical services like MTM. I briefly went over what industries are a target for automation. So why exactly is pharmacy a target of automation? There's a lot of repetitive tasks, everything from our treatment algorithms. In retail pharmacy, there's a lot of, so things like billing insurance, inventory management, even filling. All these things are our target for automation. Now, some of these things are good because it actually frees up a lot of our time and we can focus on more higher level abilities. But also, the reason why pharmacy could be a target for automation is because accuracy matters. See, we're not dealing with the wrong hamburger, the wrong fast food takeout order. We're dealing with people's lives. And so I got these numbers from somewhere. Medication errors costs the system $16.4 billion per year. And it causes over 7,000 deaths per year. So there's a lot of opportunity here. If we compare like a traditional pharmacy to a more automated system like a mail order pharmacy, with a traditional pharmacy, one in 55 prescriptions have some sort of error versus a mail order pharmacy, which is one in 1,000. All these repetitive tasks, they're not really good use of our time. And the industry is changing because we don't need manual labor anymore. Um, I was talking to my boy Brian Fong and he was telling me the only thing that's really protecting us from automation are old laws. There's laws saying that every order must be checked by a pharmacist before giving to a patient. But you never know when these states might loosen up their laws. For example, telepharmacy is very popular in those underpopulated areas where they don't really have that many healthcare providers. Places like North Dakota, um, and places I've never been to. Okay, so now we talked about why is pharmacy specifically a target for automation, but what do robots suck at? With a robot, they're not empathetic. They're not compassionate. They don't really collaborate like we do as humans, and they're not creative. They're really good at predictable tasks. So what are things that are unpredictable? Things like human interaction. If I really have a clinical question, Robots just don't understand. Tell me your problems. Well, I've been depressed lately. Really depressed. Stop being depressed. What? Do you like being depressed? No. Then stop. Problem complete. It's kind of like um, going on Google and trying to find love advice through a robot. You're not gonna find that information out there because they can't relate. They don't know what the human experience is like. Maybe they're learning, but there's no way at this point in time that they can really relate. Those are opportunities where us pharmacists, we can jump in and we're 
free available resources for everyone. Going back to inter human interaction, one of the things that us humans do really great is ha we have so many different perspectives, especially when we're trying to collaborate with the healthcare team. That's why we have such a broad spectrum of people on the healthcare team. I, I like to think that, you know, when we're doing treatment algorithms, everything is clear cut but sometimes there's a lot of gray area at this current moment you can't always automate those processes when there's these gray area gray area moments it's important to get many perspectives so we can get a full picture of a problem another thing that a robot or automation can't really take place of robots can't offer creative solutions and recommendations there's ai and that's still developing only us humans can really find creative solutions. I think as healthcare professionals, we really listen to our patients and we find the real problems for our patients. An example might be, I would say with pharmacists, we are the adherence kings or the experts on medication adherence, right? When a patient doesn't pick up their medication on time. Please select one of the following, medication or behavioral adjustment. Drugs seem a little extreme for this. Behavioral modification selected. Like, there's so many factors that goes into it. Maybe they always forget. Or maybe they don't, just don't have a ride to the pharmacy to pick it up. A robot might look at it as increasing the medication dose when it's really, it's a problem where you can fix, where you can just set up a delivery service. So what can we do as pharmacists to provide creative solutions? Maybe there's mail order. If you work for a retail chain, they probably won't like that answer. But maybe your pharmacy has some sort of delivery. Or you can fill a 90 day supply to make it a lot easier. Or just talk to them and see if they're having really shitty side effects from their medication. Or to see if it costs too damn much. There's always solutions that we can figure out. Typically, a robot isn't gonna be able, they won't be able to reveal those things. Here's the thing, in order to have kick-ass solutions, we need to be able to empathize. That's why programs like MedRec or medication reconciliation and appointment-based modeling is key. Uh, it's not about the information, but it's the experience. It's that experience of really motivating and empowering our patients, showing that there's people in this world that actually really do care about their health. For y'all that don't know, I study, I've been studying marketing for the last few years. One of my favorite marketing books, Cash Advertising, talks about something called the Life Force 8, or the eight human needs. First one is survival, enjoyment, or life extension. The second need is enjoyment of food. Third one is freedom of pain or fear. Four is that sexual companionship. Five is to have comfortable living conditions. Six is to be winning at life. Seven is care and protection of loved ones. Eight is just social approval. So having people that really care for you or love you. And so I want you to think, for the things like pharmacy, how do we serve these eight human needs? And I think using this framework really helps create creative solutions. We have to go beyond the role of just dispensing. So how do you create a better solution? Well, using the Life Force 8 for enjoyment of food, maybe it's recommending tasty alternatives like Maybe they like mashed potatoes, but they're diabetic and they can't do that. Well, why not use cauliflower mash? Maybe it's care, where they have someone in their life who really cares about their health. Sexual companionship. Well, I'm not telling you to sleep with your patients. Maybe you can help encourage them if they have something like HIV or herpes or something really empowering them that their life is not over, their sex life is not over. And that leads me to the last one, freedom of fear. Again, letting them know that things like HIV is not a death sentence anymore. It's a manageable disease state. Yes, there's a lot of life changes, right? But it's not over. I want to emphasize, in order to protect ourselves against automation, we have to think beyond the dispensing role. We have to think of creative solutions for our patients, things that they actually give a fuck about. Robots cannot replace direct patient care. Or third thing, if you can't beat the robots, join them. You might be asking, okay, Kevin, you've covered a lot about dispensing medications and all that sort of stuff, but will a residency protect me? And what a residency is, is just spending maybe a year or two after pharmacy school just to specialize in something and to gain more knowledge about something. So today, I'll, I'll be giving three different categories of pharmacy residency I was, I was looking at. So things like creating creative solutions, pharmacogenetics, which is studying the effect of genetic factors with reactions to medications. There's also investigational drug service, which support clinical drug research. You can focus on improving systems. So things like medication use safety, 
which is a basically a leadership role in developing and implementing system changes to improve safety, effectiveness, and appropriateness of medications. There's pharmacy informatics, which my boy Brian Fung does, and there's one-on-one -on -one services, things like ambulatory care. As you're going through your residencies, as you're thinking about what you wanna do for your career, I think it's important. What sort of human needs can't you replace with automation? Well, anyways, keep in mind, these are just some of the ones that popped out at me. If you wanna take a look at all the different residencies, I'll put a link below. And finally, if you're a retail or community pharmacist like me, I think it's really important to be proactive in the community. So many pharmacists I know, they just stop helping students, they stop volunteering, and the public doesn't really know what we do. And I really think it's our, our job to educate people and let people know that. We're, we're some of the most caring healthcare professions. I mean, we give our half our services for freaking free, man. You know, it's really time that we educate the public about what we do, that we do more than just count pills. So it's important to be active in different programs like my appointment-based modeling and be active with MTM. Even though it gets busy, it's important to prioritize that because our future depends on it. So let me know, are you scared of automation? And as always, make sure to subscribe and I appreciate all the love. We finally hit 4.5K and uh, I know it's not that much, but anything's anything and it really helps this channel. I appreciate it. Make sure to follow me on the refugee hustle journey, baby. If you guys want more pharmacy videos, let me know in comments what kind of pharmacy videos you want. I'll put my playlist of all the pharmacy videos I have. I think I have almost 200 videos and just watch them. So anyways, guys, appreciate the love. Take care. Peace, modern people. Bye. Huh.